It's like Bonnie and Clyde. Sidney and Hillary were running America while he was busy doing what he does best, chasing interns. And during that period, she decided there weren't enough Democrats and that liberals were not reproducing enough Democrats because generally liberals only want sex without children. And so she figured out very wisely that in order to get more Democrats so that she could be president one day, she better break the borders down and bring them in by the train load, bus load, plane load. And look at that. Look where we are today. Bringing them in around the clock from south of the border, north of the border, east of the border, west of the border. And what do you think they're bringing them in for? Do you think they're bringing them in because they have compassion? They're bringing them in for one reason only. Cheap labor if they can work and voting Period. No other reason. Now, I have made my point on borders. What does it have to do with our language? What does it have to do with our language? In the sickest city in America, San Francisco, which is also the most corrupt, if we had a true U.S. attorney, as they do in New York, there'd be arrests like you can't believe. Half the leadership in the city would be in orange jumpsuits if, if we had a Mr. Bahara, as they do in New York City, like they took down Sheldon Silver, the very religious Sheldon Silver in New York State. Another one who hid behind his religion. And he's not a Muslim, by the way. He's Jewish. Don't get me started on that, boy. I can go on on that for about two hours. About people of any religion who use their religion as a weapon to keep people away from their corruption or their deviancy. Sheldon Silver was a religious Jewish man on the surface. But Sheldon Silver, one of the most powerful politicians in New York State, was just indicted for all sorts of unimaginable crimes that you can never imagine, financial crimes mainly. And so don't think it's limited to one religion. The corruption is rampant, and many people will use any weapon they can uh, to get what they want. But nevertheless, so borders, language, culture is what we're talking about. And the only question is, I don't want to only talk about Trump, 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 Trump. It's, just, it's okay, it's done already. We know what's going on. He said what everyone's thinking. And as a result, the vermin on the left are jumping on him, saying things about him that they've said about everybody in talk radio who has more or less said the same thing for the last number of years. It's that simple. But nobody on the national stage has said it, so they can ignore us. They can make believe we don't exist, even though our audiences are multitudes larger than theirs. Multitudes. Anyone in syndicated radio in the top five shows has a far larger audience than anybody in television on a daily basis. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. Let me conclude this hour by saying I have a political statement to make. I'm calling for a legislative ban on first cousin marriages in the United States of America. Right now, first current marriage is prohibited in many states, but not in all. I'm going further than that. I want to ban on all first cousin marriages in the United States of America. That would be a compassionate imperative for the United States of the of the, the United States of America for Muslims and non Muslims. Compassion for the health of future generations would dictate that we should ban into marriage among first cousins. It would also lessen Muslim immigration to the West because Muslims overwhelmingly want to marry Muslims. In fact, the religious beliefs prohibit marrying non-Muslims. Did you know that? And as a result, it prohibits them or prevents them from adding fresh genetic material to their population. This is an amazing fact that no one's talking about. Take a look at the Arab world overall and see what kind of education is going on. There's almost no interest in science and human development in the Muslim world. The UN Arab Human Development Reports, AHDR out of the UN, concludes that there have been fewer books translated into Arabic in the last thousand years than the amount of books translated within the country of Spain each and every year. Why is that? Once you come to understand what I'm saying to you, you understand that this massive immigration from Muslim nations will destroy this country as sure as we are sitting here. And this is not about race. This is about intelligence and education. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And the worst thing that's ever happened to ISIS, the people in my party fully understand that. They're running against me. For the most part, they have no poll numbers. I'm leading by a lot. They get it. They're trying to get publicity for themselves. You know, when I came out against illegal immigration, everybody fought the same thing. Two weeks later, everybody was on my side, including the members of my own party. All right. It's all about immigration. It's all about Trump. And it's all about the demagogues and the fools who are misinterpreting what he's saying on purpose for political gain. In the first hour... I talked about inbreeding, and I talked about the dangers of immigrants who have been brought up in families that have inbred for, for generations. I gave examples. I told you what it means for the short and long term of any society that does not discriminate as to which immigrants, immigrants they want to bring in. You have to discriminate. Don't you discriminate every day of your life? Listen to me, you good liberals out there who think that I'm such a Neanderthal. You discriminate every day of your life, don't you, who you have lunch with? Who you have dinner with? What about the condo you live in? Or the co-op? Aren't you discriminating against and for certain people? The country clubs you join? Of course you're a discriminant. You're, you're a very, very discriminating person. You choose who you will talk with and who you won't. Who you'll be seen with, who you won't. Where you'll eat, where you won't eat. Where you'll sleep, where you won't sleep. And don't Mr. and Mrs. Obama discriminate as to the school they send their lovely daughters to? Of course they do. Did they go to a very expensive private school? Why didn't they send their children to an inner city school? Because they were discriminating. They're very discriminative people. They know where the children have a better chance of getting a better education. And isn't one of the lovely daughters right now interviewing colleges? Isn't she discriminating? She doesn't want to go to Trenton State. Would Malia uh, Obama want to go to Trenton State? No. She wants to go to either Harvard, Princeton, Yale. Isn't she discriminating? So in other words, everybody discriminates except Obama when it comes to immigrants. And so what I'm saying is we need to be choosy as to who we let into the country. I say let nobody in for seven years till we can sort out who's already here. But that's a whole separate story. We're talking about the dangers of inbreeding. I've done it for one straight hour. I broke new ground. I talked about why there's no terrorism in Japan because Muslims are basically forbidden from entering Japan. There are no major mosques in Japan, no books, no, no um, Korans in Arabic in Japan, et cetera, and so on. We call it Japanese and racist. Now, all you pseudo-historians are probably uncomfortable with what I've just said. But the fact of the matter is, everything is a fact, or I wouldn't have said it. What are we doing now? Importing moderate terrorists from Syria? Is that what we're doing? We're importing moderate terrorists. Now, what's a moderate terrorist? There's someone who holds your legs down while the, while the bad terrorist cuts your head off. A bad terrorist cuts your head off, and a moderate terrorist holds your legs down while your head's being cut off. KVOR, it's time for the callers now for 15, 20 minutes. Okay, are you ready? Bob, KVOR Radio, line one, go ahead, please. I was, I'm was i a retired Special Forces U.S. Army Green Beret. I did several tours, Bosnia and Kosovo. One of the tasks that we had was to monitor the birth rates within the hospitals there. There were two-to-one birth rates, Muslim over any other ethnic commodity in that country. Many times, you would see very young, pregnant Muslim girls in those in their areas, and it was incredible how much they were doing this. And they would do this on purpose and in, in serve enclaves to overpower them, and then use their political will and their Sharia law establishment to run these people out of their little enclaves that were within the Serb area, or the Muslim areas. I'm the only talk show host who was on the side of Serbia during Bill Clinton's illegitimate war crimes against the Serbian people. Do you remember those years or not? Yes, sir. For 72 days, my heart was breaking as I watched Bill Clinton commit war crimes. Madeleine Albright is a war criminal. They bombed Serbia illegally. They committed one war crime after another. They bombed hospitals and schools. They blew up every bridge on the Danube River in order to steal Kosovo from the Serbs. I know that. I'm the only one who talked about it. So now you're talking about another fact that I didn't know, which is that the Muslims were outbreeding the Serbs in order to overpower them. Does that sound familiar to you right now? Yes, and... 
And in addition to that, there was a couple of times, and matter of fact, one particular day, it wasn't very far away from the house that I was occupying, that that there were gypsies in that area. And they, some little turds, they had a, they had a, uh, we had a curfew at 10 o'clock for them in a little town called Jelani. As they would leave the bars, these good Muslims, after they were drinking and partying all night, would then leave. And as on their way home, they would toss grenades over the walls of any area they knew that held anybody that wasn't within what they wanted. And they killed an old woman in there. My medic went in there and tried to save her but couldn't do it. When we took her to the hospital. So what what does that have to do with immigration in America today? Obviously, you're making a bigger point. Immigration in America today, here's the problem. We have to have uh, we, I, I tell you, Bob, I, I appreciate your service to America, and I'm sending you a copy of, I think you made your point, Government Zero. I hear what you're saying, and you're saying it from a different point of view. Let's go to a Muslim caller on WMAL in Washington, D.C., line 9. Go ahead, please, make your point quickly on the Savage Nation. Uh, hello? Yes, make your point. You're on the air. Yeah, I, I, just, I just want to dispute what you've been saying about Islam, okay? You, you were talking about inbred. There's nothing in uh, in the Quran that says you can marry your your first cousins. I would refer you to chapter four of the Quran that states who you can marry. And part of uh, the part of the people that you cannot marry are your cousins, your first cousins, your, your people that are related to you. So well, that, well that's, that's 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 good to know. Then why is it that 55 percent of Pakistanis in England are marrying their first cousin? That's, that's, maybe that's Pakistani culture. That's not the Quran. That's Pakistani culture. You should talk about their, their own culture, not the Quran. Okay? But, wait, but, but they're not Pakistani Christians. You don't know what you're talking about. You're supposed to be an intelligent man. But you, well, you're supposed- sir, you just got caught in your mistake. Don't now get angry and try to jawbone me with your anger and your rage. You just lost the argument. You just said it's Pakistanis, not Muslims, and I said it's Pakistani Muslims, not Pakistani Christians that are inbreeding. Okay, but okay, but maybe that's Pakistani culture. But maybe that's the. Right, so you made a good point. It is Pakistani culture, but where are they getting it from? It, from their own culture, not the Quran. I'm going to refer you to the Quran. If you can. In Britain, in Britain, fifty-five percent of British Pakistanis marry first cousins, and the consequences of such. Consanguinous marriages are very unpleasant. Death, low intelligence, mental retardation. That's what we're talking about. Negative cognitive consequences on, on people uh, who marry first cousins. The Quran tell people to marry their first cousins. Over and over again, and you're proving my point. You're obsessed with the Quran. Do you read any other books? Of course, I read, I read other books. Right, but I'm not going to sit as a Muslim, right? I'm not going to sit here and, and let you tell lies about my religion. About well, here we go again. Here we go. Why don't you get out the blade now and start running amok now? You can't have a you can't have an intelligent conversation. Right away, you're enraged over a fact that I made. I didn't make it up. I said 55 percent of all Pakistanis in London are marrying first cousins, and it is not a healthy thing for the society or the children. So now, what are you getting so excited about? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm excited because what you, you said, I, I heard you in your opening statement, right? You were talking about inbred. You said it's the Quran. It's the Quran. That's what you said. Okay. No, I did not say that. I never said that. Yes, you did. I never said that. I never said that. You said Muslims, right? They, they yes, were- I, I didn't say. I didn't say the Quran says it. I said it's very common amongst Muslims in the third world. I specifically stated the following. I said inbreeding is common in Islamic culture. That's what I said. Where you get your, your 70 cents from? I don't know where they got your facts from. You say 70 All right, here, now you're an expert. What are you, a scientist as well as being an enraged individual in Washington, D.C.? Are you walking around like you know everything? What do you mean where I get my facts from? I'm a trained scientist. I get my facts from facts. You get it from your Quran. Your whole Quran is the whole world to you, right? That's all you have is your holy book. To you, you only need one book, the Quran. That's all you need, right? Wait a minute. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, right? That no, I'm telling you that you're an ignorant man. 
that if you walk around with one book and that's your whole world, then you know nothing except the one book. My old one, man. 